Welcome back to Bible Stories, the channel where we dive deep into the most fascinating, challenging, and inspiring stories from Scripture. Today, we explore the story of Ham, the son of Noah, whose life holds one of the Bible's most mysterious and debated moments. What happened between Ham and his father? How did this single event shape not only his descendants but entire civilizations throughout history? In this video, we'll uncover the legacy of Ham, the father of many nations, including the Egyptians and Canaanites, and explore how his actions rippled through generations, leaving behind both blessings and curses. This isn't just a tale of family conflict. It's a profound lesson on respect, heritage, and how the choices we make can impact not only our lives but the lives of those who come after us. As we unravel the deep biblical and historical implications of Ham's story, we invite you to reflect on how the past continues to influence the present. Before we dive into this captivating narrative, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to leave a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and make sure to share this video with your church group, family, and friends. Your support helps us continue bringing these powerful biblical stories to life. Imagine being part of one of the most influential families in human history, witnessing events that forever altered the course of humanity. Yet, despite this monumental legacy, you carry a mark that echoes through the generations. This is the story of Ham, the son of Noah, whose life reveals one of the Bible's most mysterious and debated moments. A single action, seemingly minor, rippled through time, creating consequences that have intrigued scholars and believers alike. What really transpired between Ham and his father? Why did this event leave such a profound and lasting impact on history? Today, we will dive deep into this fascinating story, uncovering lessons about respect, honor, and the weight of family heritage. Ham, the second son of Noah, was born into a world on the brink of utter destruction. His father, a man of unwavering faith, had been chosen by God to save humanity from an impending flood that would wipe the earth clean of its corruption. While Noah tirelessly constructed the ark, Ham grew up under the immense weight of a divine mission that would alter the fate of all living things. After the flood, when the waters receded and the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat, Noah's family emerged as the sole survivors in a world washed clean. Alongside his brothers, Shem and Japheth, Ham bore the heavy responsibility of repopulating a world now devoid of life. The barren plains and desolate mountains stood as a stark reminder of the flood's devastation, but they also offered a fresh start, a blank canvas upon which a new human history would be painted. In this tale of renewal and rebirth, Ham stood out as a particularly complex and enigmatic figure. Unlike his brothers, who seemed to embrace their responsibilities with quiet devotion, Ham was marked by curiosity, ambition, and a rebellious streak that often put him at odds with his father's expectations. As the post-flood world took shape, Ham became a bold explorer. He led expeditions into uncharted territories, discovering new resources and possibilities that would lay the foundation for future generations. His leadership and courage earned him respect, but Ham's desire for independence often clashed with the more conservative outlook of his father, Noah. This growing tension between father and son was like a storm gathering on the horizon, ready to break at any moment. Ham's insatiable curiosity led him to push the boundaries of this new world. While Noah preached caution, Ham sought to test the limits of what was possible in this reimagined earth. His brothers accepted Noah's authority without question. But Ham's independent spirit brought friction to the family dynamic. And it was against this backdrop of tension and discovery that one fateful event occurred, an event that would leave a lasting scar on Ham's lineage. On an ordinary day in the post-flood world, a moment occurred that would forever change the destiny of Ham and his descendants. Noah, now an established patriarch and successful cultivator of vineyards, had just harvested an abundant crop of grapes. In celebration of the harvest, Noah drank deeply from the wine he had produced, unaware of its potency. Exhausted from his labor and inebriated from the strong wine, Noah fell into a deep, drunken sleep inside his tent. 
unaware that his body had become exposed. It was in this vulnerable state that Ham discovered his father. Entering the tent, Ham was initially shocked to see Noah in such a condition, but this shock quickly transformed into something darker. Instead of turning away in respect, Ham allowed his gaze to linger, his expression shifting to one of mockery and disdain. Rather than preserve his father's dignity, Ham left the tent and sought out his brothers, Shem and Japheth, recounting the humiliating sight with derision and scorn. Shem and Japheth, horrified by their brother's disrespect, responded in stark contrast. With a cloak in hand, they walked backward in a Noah's tent, carefully covering their father's nakedness without ever looking upon him. Their actions were a testament to their deep reverence and respect, highlighting a moral divide between the brothers. Where Ham had shown disregard, they displayed the utmost honor. Ham's actions were more than just an act of disrespect. In the cultural context of the time, uncovering a father's nakedness was considered a grievous offense, akin to challenging his authority and honor. By mocking Noah in this moment of vulnerability, Ham was not only dishonoring his father, but also defying the divine order that had established Noah as the leader of the family and God's representative on earth. When Noah awoke from his stupor and learned of what had transpired, his fury was immense. The man who had led humanity through the destruction of the flood and had made a covenant with God now felt betrayed by his own son. His response was swift and severe. Noah pronounced a curse, not on Ham directly, but on Ham's son, Canaan. Curse be Canaan, the lowest of slaves shall he be to his brothers, Noah declared, sealing the fate of Ham's descendants. The reasons for Noah's decision to curse Canaan rather than Ham himself have been the subject of intense debate for centuries. Some scholars suggest that cursing a child was a more potent form of punishment, as it affected not just the individual, but their entire lineage. Others believe Noah saw, in Canaan, the same rebellious tendencies he had observed in Ham. Regardless of the rationale, the curse had far-reaching implications, marking the descendants of Canaan for generations to come. This curse would resonate through biblical history, with the descendants of Shem and Japheth ultimately subjugating the Canaanites, fulfilling Noah's ominous prophecy. Yet, the curse was not an eternal condemnation. Throughout the Bible, there are instances of Canaanites finding redemption, most notably Rahab, the Canaanite woman who saved the Israelite spies and became an ancestor of Jesus Christ. Her story stands as a reminder that while the curse was powerful, it was not unbreakable. In the aftermath of Noah's curse, Ham's role in human history did not diminish. He fathered four sons, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan each of whom would become the progenitor of powerful nations. Their bloodlines spread across continents, influencing the destinies of peoples and empires. Ham's descendants would play pivotal roles in the development of ancient civilizations, and their stories would be woven into the grand tapestry of human history. Ultimately, the legacy of Ham is one of both honor and shame, ambition and rebellion, blessings and curses. His story serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of respect, the weight of family heritage, and the consequences of our actions across generations. Imagine being part of a lineage whose influence shaped the very foundation of some of the most powerful and enduring civilizations in history. This is the story of the descendants of Ham, son of Noah, whose legacy is woven deeply into the narrative of the Bible and the annals of human progress. From ancient kingdoms filled with mystery and wealth to the birth of some of the most significant cultures of Africa and the Middle East, Ham's offspring played crucial roles in the advancement of civilization. Let's explore how these descendants, often referred to as Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan, forged empires, established distinct societies, and left a lasting imprint on human history. One of the most fascinating lines of Ham's descendants came from Cush known to the Greeks as Ethiopia. The people of Cush spread across Africa, establishing influential kingdoms renowned for their unique cultures and military prowess. Known for their dark skin and feared for their skills in warfare, the Cushites held a position of prestige in the ancient world. The land of Cush, frequently mentioned in the Bible, became synonymous with mystery, 
wealth, and exotic goods. This was a kingdom of gold, spices, and treasures that drew merchants from distant lands, making it a vibrant center of trade and culture. Mizraim, the second son of Ham, is universally recognized as the father of the Egyptians. In Semitic languages, the name Mizraim is often used to denote Egypt itself, highlighting the close association between this figure and one of the most influential civilizations in human history. The legacy of Mizraim's descendants is awe-inspiring. The grandeur of the pyramids, the splendor of the pharaohs, and the intricate hieroglyphic writing system are all testaments to the monumental achievements of ancient Egypt. This civilization, deeply rooted in the descendants of Mizraim, shaped the course of human history with its advances in architecture, medicine, and governance. Put, the third son of Ham, is a somewhat enigmatic figure in the biblical narrative with less detailed information about his descendants. Some scholars associate his lineage with the Libyans or the people who inhabited the coastal regions of North Africa. Although Put's descendants are not as prominently featured in scripture as those of his brothers, they nonetheless contributed to the rich mosaic of ancient cultures that flourished along the Mediterranean and beyond. These people played a key role in the development of coastal trade networks and military strategies that influenced the region for centuries. Canaan, the youngest son of Ham, became the patriarch of the Canaanites, a people whose significance in biblical history is profound. The Canaanites inhabited the region that would later be known as the Promised Land and established powerful city-states with a highly developed culture. Despite their advanced civilization, the fate of the Canaanites became intricately linked to the Israelites, culminating in generations of conflict that would shape the history of the ancient Near East. The Canaanites' interactions with the Israelites, sometimes adversarial and at other times cooperative, left a lasting mark on the biblical narrative and on the cultural development of the region. As the generations passed, the descendants of Ham spread far and wide, founding empires, building monumental cities, and developing innovative technologies. From the fertile plains of Canaan to the banks of the Nile and the highlands of Ethiopia, Ham's legacy flourished across vast areas of Africa and the Middle East. These diverse cultures contributed to the rich tapestry of human civilization, often rivaling the achievements of the descendants of Shem. Though the biblical narrative tends to focus more on Shem's lineage, the contributions of Ham's descendants are undeniable and continue to fascinate scholars and readers today. Ham's descendants played an integral role in shaping the course of biblical and human history, often acting as pivotal actors in events that define the sacred narrative. Egypt, the land of Mizraim's descendants, is central to the Exodus story, one of the most significant and enduring accounts in Judeo-Christian tradition. Egypt provided refuge for the Israelites during a devastating famine, and it was in Egypt that they grew from a small family into a nation. The eventual enslavement of the Israelites and their miraculous liberation under Moses became a foundational story for the Jewish people, with Egypt's grandeur and cruelty serving as the backdrop against which God's power was revealed. The descendants of Cush, too, appear in key biblical moments. The Queen of Sheba, often associated with Ethiopia, visited King Solomon, marveling at his wisdom and wealth. This interaction not only highlights Israel's prestige under Solomon, but also underscores the diplomatic and cultural ties between Israel and the nations descended from Ham. Moreover, the Ethiopian eunuch, who was baptized by the Apostle Philip in the New Testament, played a crucial role in the spread of early Christianity, further intertwining the histories of Israel and the descendants of Ham. The Canaanites, perhaps the most complex and controversial of Ham's descendants, had a multifaceted relationship with the Israelites. Inhabiting the Promised Land, they were often portrayed as adversaries, but the reality was far more nuanced. The Israelites not only fought the Canaanites but also traded with them and in some cases intermarried. Canaanite culture, with its advanced urban centers and sophisticated religious practices, influenced the Israelites in profound ways, for better or worse, depending on the biblical author's perspectives. Another group frequently associated with Ham's descendants, the Philistines, played a central role in the biblical narratives of the judges and early kings of Israel. From David's legendary battle with Goliath to the ongoing conflicts between the Israelites and Philistines during Saul's reign, 
the Philistines shaped the development of Israel's national identity. These encounters were not only military in nature, but also cultural, with the Israelites adopting elements of Philistine technology and practices. The presence of Ham's descendants in the biblical narrative also extends into the realm of prophecy. Egypt, for instance, is frequently mentioned in prophetic books, sometimes as a looming threat and other times as a potential ally against greater powers like Assyria or Babylon. These prophecies reflect the geopolitical realities of the time and emphasize God's dominion over all nations, not just Israel. In addition to their biblical significance, the descendants of Ham made remarkable contributions to human civilization, particularly in architecture, science, and technology. The Egyptians, the most well-known of Ham's descendants, are celebrated for their monumental achievements. The pyramids, standing as eternal symbols of their architectural genius, are testaments to their advanced knowledge of engineering and mathematics. Ancient Egypt also made strides in medicine, with surgical techniques and pharmaceutical treatments that were far ahead of their time. The Kushites, descendants of Kush, developed a unique and powerful kingdom in what is now Sudan. Their skills in metallurgy, especially in working with iron, helped them create impressive weapons and tools. They built pyramids, although smaller than those in Egypt, and developed their own written language, further demonstrating their cultural sophistication. Ethiopia, another region associated with Kush, developed a civilization that amalgamated African, Semitic, and Christian influences, contributing significantly to the religious and cultural heritage of the region. The Canaanites, though often remembered for their conflicts with Israel, left an indelible mark on the world through their development of the alphabet, which revolutionized communication and made knowledge more accessible. Their city-states served as important hubs of trade and cultural exchange, linking Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Aegean. Canaanite mythology and religious practices also influenced the development of later cultures in the region. In sum, the descendants of Ham were more than just background figures in the Bible. They played crucial roles in shaping ancient civilizations and contributing to the broader narrative of human progress. Whether through their monumental architectural achievements, their advanced technological innovations, or their complex interactions with the Israelites, Ham's descendants left a legacy that continues to resonate throughout history. The influence of Ham's descendants on philosophical and ethical thought is vast and profound, shaping not only the ancient world, but echoing through millennia. One notable example is the Egyptian concept of Ma'at, a central tenet representing order, balance, and justice. This principle profoundly impacted the development of moral and philosophical systems, providing a framework for understanding the relationship between humans, society, and the divine. Maya did not merely govern individual behavior, but extended to how rulers were expected to maintain cosmic order, and its influence is evident in both religious and secular thought that emerged from ancient Egypt. In Ethiopia, the wisdom traditions preserved in texts like the Kabra Nagast offer deep insights into governance, spirituality, and morality. These Ethiopian teachings reflect a blend of African, Jewish, and Christian influences showcasing the intellectual and philosophical contributions of Ham's descendants. These traditions explore profound questions of justice, leadership, and divine right, contributing to the rich cultural and intellectual heritage that has inspired scholars for centuries. Ultimately, the story of Ham and his descendants is one of innovation, resilience, and creativity. Despite facing challenging environments, the peoples descended from Ham not only survived but thrived, building advanced and complex cultures that left a lasting legacy. From the awe-inspiring monuments that still stand today to revolutionary scientific discoveries, and from sophisticated writing systems to deep philosophical traditions, the impact of Ham's descendants is felt across continents and time periods. His legacy reminds us that the story of human civilization is a global story, with significant contributions coming from all corners of the earth. Ham in Jewish and Christian tradition, in the dim light of an ancient synagogue in Jerusalem, Rabbi Ezra unrolled a fragile parchment. His fingers traced the worn lines of sacred text, pausing over the name of Ham, son of Noah. For generations, 
The figure of Ham has been a source of deep debate and varied interpretations within both Jewish and Christian traditions. Ham's story is like a mirror reflecting the complexities of human nature and the consequences of one's actions, reverberating through the ages. In early Jewish interpretations, Ham was often portrayed as the archetypal rebellious son, defying his father's authority and bringing a lasting curse upon himself and his descendants. Rabbinic commentaries delved into every aspect of Ham's narrative, extracting moral lessons from his actions. Some interpretations even suggested that Ham's sin went beyond mere disrespect, hinting at deeper transgressions that justified the severe curse Noah pronounced. These interpretations sought to underscore the importance of obedience, honor, and respect within family and societal hierarchies. When Christianity emerged, Ham's story took on new theological dimensions. Early Christian theologians, such as Augustine of Hippo, viewed Ham's narrative as a precursor to the division between the elect and the damned. Noah's curse became a prophecy, symbolizing the fate of nations and peoples associated with Ham. This interpretation cast Ham's descendants as figures intertwined with themes of sin, redemption, and divine justice. And the story of Ham was discussed in monasteries, churches, and theological schools across medieval Europe. However, as Europe entered the age of exploration and colonialism, the story of Ham took on a more troubling role. Distorted interpretations of Noah's curse were used to justify the subjugation of African peoples. Some argued that the curse marked Africans as destined for servitude, providing a divine rationale for slavery. This misreading of scripture not only strayed far from the original context of the biblical narrative, but also fueled centuries of racial oppression creating a grim legacy that has shaped the history of race relations in both Jewish and Christian societies. In the modern era, Jewish and Christian scholars have revisited Ham's story, seeking to reevaluate these harmful interpretations. By applying a more nuanced understanding of biblical exegesis and ethics, many now emphasize the importance of reading scripture within its historical and cultural context. This approach challenges the dangerous literalism that has often been applied to ancient texts and instead promotes a reading that values justice, equality, and compassion. Today, as students in seminaries and theological colleges around the world study Ham's story, they strive to untangle centuries of misinterpretation. The goal is not just to understand the ancient text, but to extract meaningful lessons that can be applied to the contemporary world. Ham's narrative serves as a reminder that sacred texts must be approached with humility, wisdom, and a commitment to justice. Rabbi Ezra's careful handling of the ancient scroll symbolizes the weight of this responsibility, as each generation must seek to interpret the past with wisdom and compassion. The story of Ham, with all its complexities, stands as a testament to humanity's long journey toward understanding, redemption, and unity. Historical distinctions and misconceptions about Ham. In a quiet corner of a European university library, Professor Sarah Bennett studied stacks of manuscripts, many of them yellowed with age. Her task was to unravel the centuries of misunderstanding and misinterpretation surrounding the biblical figure of Ham. Over time, the story of Ham has been manipulated to justify heinous practices, including the oppression of African peoples. Sarah's goal was to shed light on the historical truth and correct these long-standing misconceptions. One of the most persistent and damaging misinterpretations of Ham's story revolves around the curse pronounced by Noah. For centuries, many assumed that this curse applied to all of Ham's descendants, particularly to those in Africa. This interpretation, however, ignores the cultural and literary context of the Bible, as well as the nuances of ancient genealogies. As European explorers encountered new cultures during the Age of Exploration, they often turned to the Bible to justify their actions. The distorted view that Africans were cursed descendants of Ham conveniently provided a theological basis for colonization and slavery. Missionaries and colonial administrators propagated this view, often preaching that Africans were destined for subjugation because of Ham's curse. This misreading of the biblical narrative provided a powerful tool for justifying the exploitation of African peoples during the colonial era. The curse of Ham became a divine justification for European domination, 
embedding a theological distortion into the very fabric of imperial expansion. In the 19th and 20th centuries, however, scholars began to critically re-examine the Bible and its interpretations. Through linguistic, historical, and archaeological studies, they demonstrated that the so-called Curse of Ham was based more on the prejudices of interpreters than on a faithful reading of the text. Deconstructing these harmful myths became essential for both academic understanding and for healing the historical wounds inflicted by centuries of misinterpretation. As Sarah organized her notes, she reflected on the importance of her work. The process of deconstructing misconceptions about Ham is not merely an academic exercise. It is a vital step toward correcting historical injustices and promoting a more accurate and compassionate understanding of humanity. Ham's story, at its core, is not about racial distinctions or curses, but about the complexity of human nature and the need to interpret ancient texts with wisdom, empathy, and historical awareness. Theological Reflection on Ham and His Descendants In the stillness of a centuries-old chapel, Rev. Michael Thompson sat in quiet reflection. The candles flickered, casting gentle shadows on the walls as he contemplated the story of Ham and the lessons it could offer to the modern world. Ham's story, often misunderstood and misused, contained profound truths about human behavior, divine grace, and the path to redemption. What struck Rev. Thompson most was the nature of Ham's transgression. It wasn't an act of violence or grave sin, but rather a moment of disrespect, a failure to show compassion and honor. This small act, however, had enormous consequences, reminding us that even seemingly minor moral failings can ripple through time, affecting not only ourselves but future generations. The story of Ham is a lesson in the importance of every action, whether kind or cruel, and how each decision we make can shape the world around us. The Reverend also saw in Ham's story an opportunity for reflection on divine justice and mercy. While Noah's curse was severe, it was not an absolute condemnation. Throughout biblical history, we see instances where descendants of Ham's line found redemption, such as the story of Rahab the Canaanite. This suggests that divine justice is not about permanent punishment, but about the possibility of transformation and grace. In the modern world, as discussions about race, justice, and human dignity continue, Ham's story serves as a reminder of the importance of reading scripture with humility, empathy, and a commitment to justice. The layers of interpretation that have been added to Ham's narrative over the centuries need to be carefully examined, and the real message, a call for honor, respect, and compassion, needs to be brought to the forefront. Reverend Thompson's reflection in the chapel reminded him that the story of Ham is not just a tale of curse or consequence, but a testament to the enduring human struggle toward understanding, forgiveness, and unity. Every action, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, has the potential to shape the future in ways that are impossible to predict. This is a key reflection that came to Reverend Thompson as he pondered the curse pronounced by Noah upon his son Ham. Reverend Thompson saw the curse not as a rigid and unchangeable divine judgment, but as a poignant reminder of how our words and actions can ripple through generations, affecting the lives of those who come after us. The narrative of Ham calls into question the balance between individual and collective responsibility, urging us to think about the long-term impact of the choices we make today. Yet, the story does not conclude with the curse alone. Ham's descendants, like all people, are part of the larger narrative of divine redemption. This aspect of the tale illustrates a crucial theological truth. No one is beyond the reach of God's grace. Ham's inclusion in salvation history serves as a powerful testimony to the boundless scope of divine love, which transcends the barriers of ethnicity, culture, and history. It's a reminder that in the eyes of God, all people have the potential to be part of his redemptive plan. Ham's story also invites us to contemplate the theme of reconciliation. Just as the biblical story charts the long journey of human redemption, it calls each of us to seek healing and restoration in our lives and communities. The legacy of Ham, though marked by a painful curse, underscores the enduring possibility of unity and mutual understanding. The wounds of the past may run deep, 
But the path to reconciliation is always available for those who sincerely seek it. One of the most important lessons to be drawn from reflecting on Ham and his descendants is the call for theological humility. History warns us of the dangers inherent in simplistic or literal interpretations of ancient texts, especially when those interpretations are used to justify prejudice, oppression, or division. We are challenged to approach Scripture not only with reverence, but also with a critical and compassionate spirit, always seeking to understand the historical context and the deeper spiritual purpose behind the words. Moreover, Ham's narrative pushes us toward a broader understanding of identity and belonging within the human family. In a world that continues to be divided along racial, ethnic, and national lines, History reminds us of our shared origins and interconnected destinies. It challenges us to look beyond superficial differences and recognize the inherent dignity of every human being, regardless of their ancestry or background. We are all part of a global community, linked by our common humanity and the divine image within each of us. Ultimately, Reverend Thompson concluded that the true lesson of Ham's story lies not in the misinterpretations and divisions of the past, but in the ongoing call to live lives of compassion, justice, and love. The narrative encourages us to be agents of healing and reconciliation in a fractured world, to work for unity and diversity, and to remember that every individual, regardless of their heritage, is precious in the eyes of God. As the last candle flickered out in the chapel, Reverend Thompson rose, renewed in his conviction that ancient stories still have the power to illuminate the path forward. The journey of Ham and his descendants, with all its complexities and controversies, stands as a testament to humanity's long and ongoing quest for understanding, forgiveness, and unity, a search that continues to challenge and inspire us today. Lessons in Leadership, Faith, and management from the story of Ham. As the sun rose over the fertile banks of a great river, Ham, son of Noah, stood alone at the prow of a small boat. His weathered face, bronzed by the sun, reflected the wisdom of a man who had survived the cataclysmic flood and now faced the monumental task of leading his people in a world reborn. Ham understood that the responsibility before him was immense. Leading a growing family and managing limited resources in an uncertain landscape would require not only strength, but also foresight, wisdom, and resilience, qualities he had developed under the guidance of his father, Noah. Reflecting on the lessons he had learned during the construction of the ark and the long days of isolation on the floodwaters, Ham realized that leadership required not only courage but strategic planning. His first decision as a leader was crucial. He chose to settle his people on fertile land near a freshwater source, ensuring both immediate survival and long-term growth. This decision demonstrated his capacity for long-term planning, a fundamental quality for any leader managing scarce resources in a challenging environment. As the community grew, so did the complexity of its challenges. Ham faced disputes over land, internal conflicts, and threats from neighboring groups. To navigate these challenges, he recognized the need for collaboration and delegation. Ham formed a council of elders to assist him in making key decisions, thus creating a shared leadership structure that allowed him to focus on larger crises. This early form of governance, surprisingly modern for its time, highlighted Ham's adaptability and his ability to balance authority with cooperation. One of Ham's greatest tests as a leader came when a severe drought threatened his people's harvests and well-being. Faced with the crisis, Ham showed remarkable ingenuity and resilience. Drawing on his knowledge from his travels, he ordered the construction of irrigation systems and encouraged his people to diversify their crops. These measures not only averted disaster, but also laid the foundation for a more resilient and prosperous society. Ham's ability to innovate under pressure became one of his defining traits as a leader. However, like all leaders, Ham was not without his flaws. His overconfidence led him to underestimate the threat from a neighboring tribe, resulting in a conflict that could have been avoided. This painful mistake taught Ham the importance of humility and constant vigilance. He came to understand that effective leadership required not only strength, but also the willingness to learn from one's failures. 
This lesson in humility shaped Ham's leadership style in the years to come, reinforcing the importance of thoughtful decision-making and careful consideration of risks. Over time, Ham developed a leadership philosophy that balanced toughness with compassion. He understood that a leader's true power came not just from authority, but from the ability to inspire and unite people around a common goal. His approach to leadership was reflected in his daily decisions. From resolving disputes to organizing communal celebrations that strengthened social bonds and fostered a sense of unity among his people. In his twilight years, Hem looked back on his accomplishments with pride. What had once been a small group of survivors had grown into a thriving nation. His legacy of leadership, marked by strategic planning, crisis management, and a commitment to community, left an indelible mark on his people. The lessons from Ham's journey on the importance of foresight, delegation, adaptability, and humility remain relevant today, offering valuable insights for modern leaders navigating the complexities of an ever-changing world. The Cultural and Social Impact of Ham's Legacy Ham's legacy extended far beyond the immediate survival of his people. His leadership and innovations influenced the cultural and social development of civilizations across Africa and the Middle East. One of his most enduring contributions was the establishment of a system of governance based on law and justice. Inspired by the teachings of his father, Noah, Ham implemented a rudimentary code of conduct that promoted social harmony and mutual respect. Although simple by modern standards, this early legal framework laid the groundwork for the more complex systems of law that would emerge in later civilizations. Ham's innovations in agriculture were equally significant. His community developed advanced irrigation and cultivation techniques, enabling them to thrive in the challenging post-flood environment. These methods were quickly adopted by neighboring groups, leading to a widespread agricultural revolution that increased food production and allowed populations to grow. This agricultural boom laid the foundation for the development of cities, trade networks, and more complex societies. Culturally, Hem emphasized the preservation of knowledge through oral traditions. This focus on education and cultural memory helped to preserve the stories of the flood and the survival of humanity, passing them down through generations as founding myths that shaped the identities of many peoples. This emphasis on knowledge would later contribute to the development of writing systems and literature in various civilizations. In terms of diplomacy and foreign relations, Ham's leadership was marked by a careful balance of diplomacy and military strength. He formed strategic alliances with neighboring tribes, promoting peace and cooperation while remaining prepared to defend his people when necessary. This approach not only ensured the security of his community, but also facilitated the exchange of ideas and technologies, accelerating the progress of surrounding societies. Ham's religious and spiritual contributions also left a lasting mark. Although rooted in the teachings of Noah, the spiritual practices that Ham instituted evolved to reflect the unique experiences of his people. These rituals and beliefs influenced the religious development of many cultures across the region, leaving echoes that can still be traced in the spiritual traditions of various civilizations. The social structures that Ham established were equally influential. His model of leadership, which valued both hierarchy and meritocracy, inspired the organization of many ancient societies. The idea that power should be exercised responsibly and for the benefit of the community became a guiding principle, even if not always fully realized in practice. Generations after Ham's death, his impact continued to resonate throughout the civilizations that emerged in the lands he and his descendants populated. From the empires of the Middle East to the cultures of North Africa, Ham's influence can be seen in governance, religion, agriculture, and social relations. His legacy is a testament to the enduring power of visionary leadership to shape not only the present, but also the distant future of humanity. Archaeology and Historical Evidence The story of Ham, like many ancient tales, has long intrigued scholars and archaeologists. Over the centuries, they have tirelessly sought to uncover the physical evidence that could confirm or challenge the biblical accounts. From ancient ruins to inscriptions, the search for traces of Ham's influence has led to fascinating discoveries, offering insights into the civilizations that sprang from his descendants. In the ancient cities of Egypt, Sudan, 
and beyond, archaeologists have uncovered remnants of advanced irrigation systems, architectural marvels, and trade routes that reflect the innovations attributed to Ham's people. These findings provide tangible evidence of the enduring influence of Ham's descendants, reinforcing their role in shaping the early history of human civilization. As we delve into the mysteries of the past, a fascinating and intricate picture of human history begins to emerge. One of the most intriguing discoveries related to the legacy of Ham came to light during archaeological excavations in southern Mesopotamia. There, researchers uncovered ancient clay tablets dating back to the 3rd millennium BCE. These inscriptions reference a great flood and a leader who guided his people to fertile lands after the disaster. While the name inscribed on these tablets does not exactly match Ham, linguists argue that the phonetic and contextual similarities are significant enough to suggest a potential connection to the biblical narrative. Archaeological evidence from ancient settlements across North Africa and the Middle East has offered valuable insights into the possible movements and cultural developments of the descendants of Ham. Excavations in these regions have revealed patterns of migration and social organization that align surprisingly well with biblical accounts. Artifacts, including advanced agricultural tools and primitive irrigation systems, suggest that societies in these areas quickly adapted to their environment, thriving in the challenging post-flood world. These findings bolster the idea of a resilient and resourceful people who shaped the early civilizations in these regions. One of the most controversial archaeological discoveries related to Ham came from an expedition in the mountains of Ararat, traditionally believed to be the final resting place of Noah's Arkansas fragments of petrified wood, found at a high altitude and dated to be over 4,000 years old, have sparked heated debate among researchers. Some see this as potential evidence of the Ark's existence, while others in the scientific community remain skeptical, arguing that more conclusive proof is required before making such claims. The debate around this find remains unresolved but it continues to fuel curiosity about the origins of ancient stories like that of Noah and his family. Recent advances in genetic studies have provided new insights into the dispersal of human populations after the supposed flood. DNA analyses of modern populations in regions associated with Ham's descendants reveal migration patterns and genetic mixtures consistent with a rapid population expansion from a small group of ancestors. While these studies cannot definitively prove the existence of Ham as an individual, they offer intriguing support for the idea of a population bottleneck, followed by rapid repopulation, as suggested in the biblical narrative. Linguistic research has also contributed to the exploration of Ham's legacy. Studies of ancient languages from Africa and the Middle East have uncovered shared linguistic roots, which some scholars argue could be explained by the dispersal of Ham's descendants. Although this theory remains the subject of intense academic debate, the linguistic parallels between ancient civilizations suggest a common origin that may support the biblical account. Further archaeological excavations at ancient urban sites in the Middle East have revealed evidence of governance practices and social structures that align with biblical descriptions of Ham's leadership. The ruins of temples, Palaces and artifacts found at these sites indicate a stratified but socially mobile society. These findings offer a fascinating glimpse into how the earliest post-flood civilizations may have organized themselves, blending tradition with innovation in response to the new world they inhabited. However, it is crucial to recognize that despite these discoveries, the scientific community remains divided over the literal historicity of Ham and the events described in the Bible. Many archaeologists and historians view this evidence as representative of historical events and characters that may have inspired biblical narratives, rather than direct proof of them. As new technologies and excavations shed more light on this period, the debate continues, driven by an enduring human curiosity about our origins and the truth behind the myths that have shaped our civilization. Lessons in leadership and faith from the story of Ham. The story of Ham. From his humble beginnings as Noah's son to becoming a leader in the post-flood world, offers timeless lessons in leadership that resonate even today. Ham's life demonstrates the importance of learning from mistakes, adapting to change, and leading with resilience. His ability to embrace new ideas and technologies, 
even when they challenged established traditions, serves as a reminder that innovation and progressive thinking are critical qualities for leaders in today's corporate and social environments. One of Ham's most significant strengths as a leader was his empathy and compassion. Throughout his leadership journey, Ham consistently sought to address the needs of the underserved and pursued social justice. His human-centered approach highlights the importance of prioritizing the well-being of people, a principle that remains especially relevant in today's world, where corporate social responsibility and employee well-being are increasingly valued. Ham's example of ethical leadership provides a powerful model for modern executives who aspire to build sustainable and socially responsible organizations. Ham's diplomacy and ability to find common ground between rival factions also offer valuable insights for leaders facing challenges in multicultural and politically complex environments. His skillful navigation of tribal disputes and international negotiations provides a framework for managing diverse teams and global partnerships. By prioritizing cooperation and maintaining long-term alliances, Ham exemplified the type of leadership necessary for success in a world where collaboration across cultures and borders is essential. One of the most enduring lessons from Ham's life is his capacity for long-term vision, even in the face of immediate crises. As a leader, Ham understood that while short-term solutions may be necessary, it was equally important to maintain a strategic perspective and invest in initiatives that would benefit future generations. In today's era of instant gratification and the pressure for immediate results, Ham's approach serves as a reminder that true leadership requires a balance between meeting current demands and planning for sustainable, long-term growth. Ham's commitment to education and knowledge sharing further underscores his role as a visionary leader. He placed great emphasis on the preservation of knowledge and the continuous learning of his people. This commitment to education as a tool for empowerment and social progress remains relevant today, especially in the knowledge economy, where continuous learning is essential for individual and organizational success. Leaders who foster cultures of learning within their organizations follow in Ham's footsteps, ensuring that their teams remain adaptable and innovative. Ham's actions laid the groundwork for social and economic reforms that aim to build a more just and equitable society. His approach to governance, which balanced tradition with progress, offers a model for societies today that strive to preserve their cultural heritage while embracing modernization. His legacy continues to inspire social justice movements around the world, showing that the pursuit of fairness and equality is a timeless and universal principle. During times of crisis, whether natural disasters or human conflicts, Ham's courage and determination were crucial to his people's survival. His ability to remain calm under pressure and make difficult decisions serves as a beacon for modern leaders facing global crises such as pandemics, climate change, and political instability. Ham's resilience and capacity to inspire hope during dark times offer lessons that resonate deeply in today's volatile world. Ultimately, Ham's story reminds us that true greatness in leadership is not measured solely by personal achievements, but by the positive and lasting impact on the lives of others and on the future of society. His legacy teaches us that effective leadership is a blend of vision, compassion, courage, and an unwavering commitment to the common good. His life continues to inspire and guide leaders across all sectors proving that the principles of good governance and ethical leadership are truly timeless and universal. In summary, Ham's journey from a survivor of the flood to a leader who shaped the future of his people is filled with lessons that apply to today's world. Whether in times of crisis or peace, Ham's story emphasizes the importance of resilience, long-term thinking, and compassionate leadership. Leaders today, whether in business, government, or community organizations, can look to Ham as an example of how to navigate challenges, embrace innovation, and create a lasting positive impact on society. Imagine being part of one of the most influential families in human history, witnessing events that forever altered the course of humanity. Yet, despite this monumental legacy, you carry a mark that echoes through generations. This is the story of Ham, son of Noah whose life reveals one of the Bible's most mysterious and debated moments, a moment that ripples through time, raising questions about family, respect, and divine judgment. Ham, the second son of Noah, 
was born into a world on the brink of destruction. His father, Noah, was a man of unwavering faith, chosen by God to build an ark that would save humanity from the impending flood. As Noah and his family took refuge on the ark, they watched as the earth was purged of its wickedness. After the floodwaters receded, Noah's family became the sole survivors in a newly purified world. Alongside his brothers, Shem and Japheth, Hem inherited the monumental task of repopulating the earth. In this reborn world, Hem stood out as a figure of contrast and complexity. Unlike his brothers, who quietly accepted their roles, Ham was driven by curiosity and ambition. This made him a bold leader, but it also put him at odds with the values of his father, Noah, who had been divinely appointed to lead humanity after the flood. As the family settled into this new world, tension brewed between Ham and his father, foreshadowing a rift that would forever alter Ham's legacy. One day, Noah, now a successful farmer and wine grower, celebrated an abundant harvest of grapes by drinking from the wine he had produced. Unaccustomed to its strength, Noah soon became drunk and fell asleep inside his tent, unaware that he had exposed himself. Ham, entering the tent, saw his father in this vulnerable state. Rather than protect his father's dignity, Ham mocked Noah and, in an act of disrespect, left to share the sight with his brothers, Shem and Japheth. Shem and Japheth, horrified by Ham's behavior, responded with reverence. Taking a cloak, they walked backward into the tent, covering their father without looking upon him. This act of filial piety stood in stark contrast to Ham's mockery, highlighting a moral divide between the brothers. When Noah awoke and learned of Ham's disrespect, his reaction was swift and severe. In a moment of divine fury, Noah cursed Ham, not directly, but through his son Canaan. Cursed be Canaan, Noah declared. The lowest of slaves shall he be to his brothers. This curse would echo throughout biblical history, with the descendants of Ham, particularly the Canaanites, often depicted as adversaries of the Israelites. Yet, the curse was not without hope, as later narratives, like the story of Rahab, demonstrated the possibility of redemption. As time passed, Ham became the father of four sons. Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Each of these sons would establish powerful nations, playing significant roles in shaping the ancient world. Ham's descendants contributed to the development of civilizations that were instrumental in the progression of human history. The descendants of Ham and their legacy. One of the most well-known descendants of Ham was Cush, whose people are often associated with the region known to the Greeks as Ethiopia. The Kushites established kingdoms of great power and wealth, known for their military prowess and rich cultural traditions. These people became synonymous with exotic goods, wealth, and a mystery that attracted traders from distant lands. The Bible frequently references the land of Cush, highlighting its significance as a vibrant center of trade and culture. Mizraim, another son of Ham, is recognized as the father of Egypt one of the most influential civilizations in human history. The grandeur of the pyramids, the majesty of the pharaohs, and the complex hieroglyphic writing system all stand as testaments to the enduring legacy of Mizraim's descendants. Ancient Egypt, deeply rooted in the lineage of Ham, would become a cradle of civilization, contributing advances in architecture, medicine, governance, and philosophy. Put, the third son of Ham, is more obscure in the biblical narrative. Some scholars associate his descendants with the Libyans or other peoples along the Mediterranean coast of North Africa. Although less prominently featured in scripture, the legacy of Put's people contributed to the rich mosaic of cultures that shaped the Mediterranean, influencing trade networks and military strategies in the region. Canaan, the youngest of Ham's sons, became the patriarch of the Canaanites. The Canaanites established a network of powerful city-states, building a sophisticated culture in the region that would later become the Promised Land. Their interactions with the Israelites, often marked by conflict, would shape the course of biblical history. Despite being cursed, Canaan's people were advanced and influential, contributing to the cultural and historical development of the Near East. Ham's descendants in Biblical and Historical Context
The descendants of Ham were not only actors in biblical history, but also key figures in the development of ancient civilizations. The land of Egypt, with its grandeur and cruelty, played a central role in the Exodus narrative, one of the most significant stories in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Certainly, Joe. Here's a long text about Ham, traditionally considered the father of black people, weaving together historical, cultural, and biblical perspectives. Ham, the father of black people in biblical tradition. The story of Ham is one of the most intriguing and sometimes controversial narratives in the Bible, often associated with the origins of African and other peoples. According to biblical genealogies, Ham is one of Noah's three sons and the ancestor of several nations, many of which came to be associated with Africa and other regions. To understand the significance of Ham as the father of black people, we must examine his story from historical, cultural, and theological perspectives. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag one. The biblical background of Ham. Ham first appears in the Bible in Genesis as one of the three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Together, these three sons are said to have populated the earth after the great flood, symbolizing a new beginning for humanity. The Bible associates Ham with several important descendants, including Cush, Mizraim, Put and Canaan, who were believed to have settled in lands that we today associate with parts of Africa and the Middle East. In Genesis 10, often called the Table of Nations, the descendants of Noah's sons are described, outlining the beginnings of various tribes and nations. Ham's descendants are listed as Cush, identified with Ethiopia or Nubia, Mizraim, Egypt, Put often identified with Libya, and Canaan, whose descendants lived in the land that would later become Israel and surrounding territories. For centuries, theologians and scholars interpreted these lineages as explanations for the diversity of ethnic groups and the spread of humanity across different continents. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag two. The Curse of Ham. A misinterpreted narrative? One of the most misunderstood aspects of Ham's story is the so-called Curse of Ham. After the flood, there is an episode in Genesis 9 where Ham, upon finding his father Noah in a vulnerable state, acts in a way that leads Noah to pronounce a curse. Noah says, Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be to his brothers. Genesis 9 verse 25. Notably, the curse does not actually fall on Ham himself, but on his son, Canaan. Despite this, some historical interpretations link the curse directly to Ham and, by extension, his supposed descendants, including African peoples. This reading has been widely criticized by modern scholars as a misinterpretation. Nowhere does the Bible explicitly suggest that all of Ham's descendants were cursed or destined for servitude. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag three. Historical impact and misinterpretations. During various periods of history, especially in the 18th and 19th centuries, certain groups misused the story of Ham to justify racial discrimination and slavery, claiming that the curse was a divine justification for enslaving Africans. This misuse of the Bible tragically influenced and reinforced prejudices and led to the suffering of countless people. Today, biblical scholars emphasize that the so-called curse of Ham was not about race at all. Rather, it was about familial respect and the consequences within a specific family. The narrative centers on the relationship between Noah and his sons, rather than a justification for racial hierarchies or divisions. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag four. Ham's legacy as an ancestor of great civilizations. Despite the negative connotations that later interpretations attach to Ham's name, his descendants are credited with founding some of the ancient world's greatest civilizations. Kush, for example, is associated with the powerful kingdom of Kush in Northeast Africa, a civilization known for its advanced culture, strong kings, and prosperous trade routes. Mizraim, another descendant, is linked to Egypt, one of the ancient world's most influential and long-lasting empires. Egypt's rich contributions to knowledge, architecture, and spiritual thought remain a testament to the impact of Ham's lineage. Ham's descendants, therefore, are part of the biblical narrative not only as members of Noah's family, but as founders of vibrant and powerful nations that shaped human history. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag five. The cultural significance of Ham in African and African diaspora communities. 
In African and African diaspora cultures, hem is sometimes viewed with reverence, seen as a symbol of resilience and historical depth. For many, he represents a forefather whose descendants endured, persevered, and contributed profoundly to the world's cultural and historical landscape. In this context, Ham's lineage is celebrated as a part of the rich heritage and identity of black people worldwide. Various African communities have different traditions and interpretations that link them to the biblical narrative. These interpretations are part of a larger tapestry of religious identity, giving African communities a deep sense of connection to the Bible and its characters, including Ham. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag six. Reclaiming Ham's legacy. In recent years, there has been a movement to reclaim and reinterpret the story of Ham in a positive light. Scholars, theologians, and leaders within African and African diaspora communities have worked to dispel harmful interpretations and replace them with perspectives that honor Ham's role as a father of nations. They emphasize his legacy of resilience, cultural richness, and historical importance. Reinterpreting Ham's story as one of significance rather than shame allows for a fuller appreciation of the Bible's portrayal of diverse people and nations. It also serves as a reminder that scripture, when misused, can perpetuate harm, but when understood properly, can be a source of identity and dignity for all people. This reframed understanding of Ham as the father of black people presents him not as a cursed figure, but as a foundational ancestor whose lineage produced some of the world's most significant civilizations and whose story invites reflection on humanity's interconnectedness and shared heritage. By studying Ham's legacy and examining the historical misinterpretations surrounding his story, we are reminded of the importance of approaching scripture with both respect and caution. Egypt provided refuge during a famine, and it was there that the Israelites grew into a nation. The eventual enslavement of the Israelites and their miraculous liberation under Moses became a foundational story for the Jewish people, set against the backdrop of Egypt's power. The people of Cush also appear at important moments in the Bible. The Queen of Sheba, often associated with Ethiopia, visited King Solomon, marveling at his wisdom and wealth. This encounter not only highlights Israel's prestige under Solomon, but also underscores the cultural and diplomatic ties between the Israelites and the descendants of Ham. Additionally, an Ethiopian eunuch, baptized by the Apostle Philip in the New Testament, played a pivotal role in the early spread of Christianity. Perhaps the most complex and controversial of Ham's descendants, the Canaanites, had a multifaceted relationship with the Israelites. Often portrayed as adversaries, the reality was far more nuanced. The Israelites not only waged war against the Canaanites but also traded with them and in some cases intermarried. Canaanite culture, with its advanced urban centers and religious practices, influenced the Israelites in profound ways, sometimes for the better and sometimes, in the view of biblical authors, for worse. Ham's influence on civilization and thought. Beyond their biblical significance, the descendants of Ham made remarkable contributions to human civilization. The Egyptians, for example, are celebrated for their monumental achievements in architecture, medicine, and science. The pyramids, standing as timeless symbols of Egyptian genius, are also reflections of their advanced knowledge in engineering and mathematics. Egyptian advances in medicine, including surgical techniques and treatments, were centuries ahead of their time. The people of Kush also developed a unique and powerful kingdom, known for its achievements in metallurgy and its distinct architecture, such as smaller but steeper pyramids in Sudan. The cultural and religious influences of the Kushites reach far beyond their borders, contributing to the rich religious and philosophical traditions of the region. Ethiopia, closely associated with Kush, became a bastion of Christian influence, blending African, Jewish and Christian traditions into a distinct cultural identity. The Canaanites, often remembered for their conflicts with the Israelites, left a lasting legacy through their development of the alphabet, a revolutionary innovation that would democratize writing and make knowledge more accessible. Their city-states served as hubs of trade and culture, linking Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Aegean. Canaanite religious practices also had a lasting impact on the region, influencing the cultures that came after them. 
Reflection on Ham's Legacy The story of Ham offers profound lessons in leadership, respect, and the consequences of our actions. While Ham's story is often remembered for the curse he brought upon his descendants, it is also a story of redemption, resilience, and the enduring influence of his lineage. Despite the challenges Ham faced, his descendants went on to shape the course of history, contributing to the growth of powerful civilizations that left a lasting imprint on the world. Ham's story reminds us that the past is never simple. It challenges us to think critically about the narratives we inherit and the legacies we leave behind. His life is a testament to the complexity of human nature and the far-reaching impact of our choices, both good and bad. Ultimately, Ham's legacy is one of innovation, ambition, and resilience, serving as a powerful reminder that even in the face of adversity, the seeds of greatness can take root. As we've seen today, the story of Ham is one filled with complexity, challenge, and deep lessons about human nature, family, and legacy. His life and actions played a pivotal role in shaping the destinies of entire nations and left a mark that is felt even today. While his legacy may be controversial, it also teaches us about redemption, leadership, and the power of our actions to shape the future. Thank you for joining us in exploring this incredible story. If you found value in today's discussion, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you enjoyed this content, please leave a like and we'd love to hear your thoughts, so don't hesitate to comment below. Lastly, make sure to share this video with your church group, family, and friends. These stories are meant to be discussed and shared, and your involvement helps spread the wisdom and lessons of the Bible. Until next time, may you walk in wisdom and faith. Stay blessed.